I don't know, let's figure it out. Welcome to No Instructions, I'm Bob. And I'm Josh. We don't have a plan. No. I, I just, just... I just sidelined you guys with like, hey, we're going to record, let's go. And we don't have anything to talk about. I'm just here for the Legos, man. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we should just turn off the mics. <laughs> Stop kidding ourselves. Uh, and like the whole show for the audio only people, just be this. Oh, I dropped one. I was trying to be funny. That would be part of it. it. Dang it. We'd just be going like, hey. Have, oh, you, have you ever seen this piece? I've never seen this piece. <laughs> have you ever looked at... Actually, that I'm getting excited. Have you ever looked at the underside of one of these pieces? That's kind of weird. Look at that. Yeah. It's interesting. This makes for good talk radio. Yeah, absolutely. Stuff people can't see. See this one? Now, it, you that can see work. it if you go to the YouTube channel for no instructions and watch this podcast. Um, but if you don't, you can just listen to us. I'm working on... Uh, continuing to work on the Lego Treehouse... Gigantic set, 21, 318. This is huge. If you I don't think we've ever this. said the name uh, names or the numbers, the reference numbers for the sets, but every time I post them in the uh, show description and the notes and all that jazz, I always make sure that we put the set number. Good. Because oh, I'm a dork. Boy. There. Oh, if you're looking box. at the... <laughs> I was trying to hold... Yeah, look how big this box is. It's pretty huge. It's It's gigantic. Um, and there's like tw- uh, at least 19 bags. That's the that's the most bags that I've that I've heard of. And that's not including the greenery or yellowery. Mm. There's two the different. Foliage? So it comes with the foliage. Uh, foliage. Fo- 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 foliage. So, somebody said I know it says foliage. Mm. Maybe Jenny. You I don't need to read a book from the library. <laughs> library. <laughs> or go on a picnic. Shh. Anyway. There's some inside jokes of mispronunciations that we all have. I misspelled that. True. Thank you, um, Yogi Bear. Anyway, it comes with green leaves and autumn yellow-brown leaves, and those are not included in the 19 bags of Legos. Wow. Yeah, it's a big set. What are you working on? I'm still putting together BB-8. Cool. Yeah. This um, neat. Speaking of BB-8, like it's an excellent podcasting transition. They released uh, new Star Wars toys mm-hmm. the other day for Triple Force Friday, is what they call it. Mm. Just kind of a silly marketing name. Now, when they first started doing this, when The Force Awakens came out, came came out? Okay. <laughs> when The Force Awakens, okay, that's what it was. I got the S off. The yep. Force Awakens. Let's give that S right back. Came out. They um, were like, we're going to have big, you know, push of marketing stuff. We're going to put all these toys out because everybody loves Star Wars toys. And we're going to have this big thing called Force Friday. And some random Friday in September, they were like, okay, this is the day you can get all the new stuff. And then nobody bought any of it. And But they had put out these, like, an entire aisle at Target, like in the, the whole section. It was just this big deal. And then the next year, it was like double Force Friday. It was a little bit smaller. This year... I guess this movie, not year. This movie, I, I was kind of excited. I like toys. I mm-hmm. like collecting things. So I go uh, one morning after a run to Target real quick when they did this Triple Force Friday, thinking, hey, I'll, maybe I'll find like one of the exclusive first run Mandalorian figures or something cool like that, just mm. like one piece. I get there. It is an end cap <laughs> at Target. That's The top half of it is like some other toy i don't even know what it was but so basically the bottom half of an end cap Hmm. and it was one of each thing of the figures and stuff and that was it and so i looked around at it and i'm like oh well that was a little disappointing maybe walmart walmart goes all out yeah because our target surprisingly is not as uh upbeat or as up to date as a lot of targets yeah it's a little bit one of the smaller ones i think and so i'm thinking like well we have a like super walmart right there it's across the street i'll go over there and check it out Go through the toy section, no Star Wars. Not a thing. Hmm. And so there's a uh, dude stocking shelves, and I'm like, hey, man, is there any Star Wars stuff? And he's like, oh, yeah, they got it all set up down by electronics. I'm like, sweet. Oh, it must be so big that they by electronics. <laughs> go down there, and it's in front of the electronics section, and it's not even an end cap. It's like a cardboard box, a four-sided cardboard box that they just stuck in the middle of the aisleway. And mm-hmm. this is something like lower than waist height. Oh. <laughs> Like, like the size of the school supplies? Yeah, thing? it was yeah. one of those things yeah. with like 50 of the exact same figure on mm-hmm. one side, some like 
coloring books on the other side and then like all the Star Wars movies on the other side. <laughs> it's so weird because it, you know, they, they did like this whole big thing on StarWars.com about Triple Force Friday and we got all the guests to come, or all the stars of the movies to come in and show off their new toys and blah, 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 blah. And then you go to these stores and it's like, I don't know, they might be in that corner. I'm not really sure if we actually have any of it By or the not. coloring books. So weird. That's what all the kids are into these days. It was all strange. the hot, cool technology. <laughs> coloring books. I mean, I, I admit that it's probably not as big of a, you know, a seller as it used to be, uh, as common as kind of Star Wars movies are at they this point. Fl- they usually, I would say apparently not now, but they would flood the market with stuff. Yeah. And yeah. when I peruse the toy aisle with my kids, like, well, obviously we'll go, I'll go down to Legos. I'll go down the doll things with my daughter to see if they've gotten away from the brats and the big eyed makeup <laughs> dolls, which now they're doing like superhero mm-hmm. dolls. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, that's kind of neat. And then go, like, have to walk my boys over to go find Beyblades. And it's in between all those aisles is, like, the action figure aisle. Yeah. And Star Wars stuff hasn't had a real dominant kind of hold on that aisle in quite some time. Yeah. It's funny because, like, I mean, I've been collecting toys pretty much my entire life. And, I've, you know, I, I don't do as much of it now. I try not to buy things now because I realize that it's kind of a waste of money for me. But I still, I, I, having gone to stores since I was a kid with the intent of looking at the toys, I should know pretty much what the stores look like and, like, the way that they're set up and all this stuff. And I still picture the Target and Walmart toy aisles like... Like the Star Wars aisle at Toys R Us when I was eight years old, mm. where it was just like floor to ceiling, wall to wall, you know, ten figures deep on the pegs, just like just overflowing with toys, and you could just flip through the pegs and you find the one guy that's all the way in the back, and you got to pull them all off the pegs, and it's it's never like that. There's like nope. they have five or six action figures of this type and five or six of this type, and I don't know why that is. Maybe it's disinterest or maybe the to, there's more options for toys than there used to be, and they just still have to fit it in the same space. I don't know, but it's funny because I'm always disappointed when I go <laughs> looking for toys every single time. Yeah, me too. Which is another reason why I shouldn't spend money on toys, and I don't. Maybe the yeah. big stores are finally feeling the uh, Amazon crunch. Because yeah. I was looking for the um, the Marvel. What are they like the MCU figures that usually come out around the movies? They have a, a special name. Uh, like the legends, yeah, yeah, and they always have, <laughs> uh, like Gwen Stacy, Deadpool, and yeah. like super obscure characters, and yeah. they have like an entire rack of just that. Like those are the ones nobody wanted from last push. Yeah, and they're just still around. I don't know people that are in charge of like purchasing for big stores like this or know firsthand of this process. Please educate me on how. Like I know that. In the 80s, there was, like, the toy guide. Like, Kenner had a toy guide. Mattel had one. Oh, yeah. And you could go through and go, I want these things. I assume that's what a toy guide was for. So if you managed a store and you were able to sell those products, you could order them, pay for them, you'd resale them at a higher price. So I don't know if that's the same thing with Targets or Walmarts or, like, do they just ask for the, you know, the fiscal year 3, 2019 Marvel legends toy set or whatever and they just send them like a million gwen stacy toys or (laughs) how does that work i don't know but i mean there's especially with stuff like star wars there and transformers do this too there are tons of exclusive offerings so Mm -hmm. like with this recent push of toys there are exclusive figures for walmart for target for amazon um i feel like there's another kind of weird like maybe kohl's or something I don't know. There was another store that had that I was kind of surprised that had an exclusive thing. Ace Hardware. And the fact that <laughs> the fact that there are exclusive to store figures, it's that sounds like we have so many figures that we have to kind of spread them out and make it so you have to go from place to place to get all the ones if you're trying to collect them all or whatever. But then when you go look at any of those places, it's like, well, why don't they just have one of everything? Because that still wouldn't take up an entire section, you know. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but I guess that's just the way marketing is now. I did buy one figure, though. What'd you get? Mandalorian, Black Series. I was going for the first edition one, like in the white box is kind of a thing they're doing mm. right now. But they didn't have it. It was already gone, which <clears throat> made sense because I didn't go at 6 o'clock in the morning when they opened. But I got that one, and I got a Lego set. 
Well, what did you get? <laughs> I got a an ATST walker. Yep. From the Mandalorian. Oh, the one with the red and yeah. orange legs. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. But I don't know if I'm going to do that here. I think I'm just going to keep that one for like in front of the TV. Mm. You know, I don't know. I might bring it down here. I'm not really hurting for sets to do. True. <laughs> An entire half of this ping pong table underneath it is full of sets that have to be put together. Yeah, people have asked us what we do with the Lego sets, and the camera can't pan <laughs> that way. It, it. But that way is there. <laughs> there is a a Y wing stacked on top <laughs> of. The the battle cruiser. There's a helicopter jammed under there. There's the uh, bird horse sitting behind a stormtrooper riding a big lizard thing, which I forgot the name. Ant Man sitting inside James Bond's car, which has War Machine Hulkbuster on top of it. Yep. Yeah, we got we got a There's few a lot over of there. Stuff. Well, I went on <laughs> um, one of the the mock sites. Mm. It's not breakable. It might have been breakable. But anyway, you can put in the, the set numbers and you pretty much like inform this website of your part inventory. Hmm. And then it tells you which of the, the mock my own creation is these artists kind of put up their own super cool, unique Lego sets that are not licensed by Lego. And so you tell it all the sets you have and it's like, oh, with that collection, you can make all of these. That's and then you cool. buy like the, the plans for like five or 10 bucks off of the, the artist itself. Hmm. And there's one, I forgot which site it is, but they have the Iron Giant. I know we've talked about it. Mm -hmm. The Iron Giant Lego set, and I want to make it. But I don't know which pieces I already have. But it'll it'll piece together, like, different resellers from across the planet. And they'll go, you know, this place in the Netherlands has 100% of these pieces. And this place in South Africa has 85% of these pieces. And you just, you have to pay to get them to you. And there's between, like, 100, for that one in particular, it's between, like, 130 and 200 something dollars, depending on where you get the parts. Hmm. How big is the set? Um, so Hogarth that fits in the palm of the Iron Giant is made of the little individual circular nubs. I think like four or five of those tall. So he oh. is like, he's okay. super tiny. Yeah. And it might be Maybe 12 or 18 high. inches. I don't know. Huh. That's cool. It'd be yeah. fun to do one of those sometime. That's where your lightsaber came from. Oh, yeah. That's right. So his instructions are a little wonky, apparently. Yeah, a little bit. But I think that's one of the awesome things about Lego as a company is they're just really good at making it simple uh, to put one of these, thing these things together with no words because mm -hmm. there's no words and you still can follow it, which is pretty cool. Um, so pretty soon there should be a new Star Wars trailer, like probably in the next few days mm. they're expecting. And so I thought maybe, uh, I was curious if you had thought any more about my my uh, idea about the next Star Wars movie. If you had any thoughts on like w the way you think that story is going to go. Are we, people we can possibly be spoiling this. I mean, yeah, but we don't These know. These are all theories. This is just theories. I really about. like the, the Ray is a clone theory. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in hindsight to look back at when she jumped into the pit and she snaps her fingers and sees the whole bunch of her and she doesn't have parents. Um, I think that could possibly answer that question. And I think if J.J. Abrams, like, around the table whenever he came on to, to do episode nine, I bet they, the writers went through this. I'm like, well, people are going to say that she's a blank. Or maybe we'll leak out the Sith Trooper because the Sith Trooper has powers but also wears a helmet. And we're letting on that girls can be inside this Stormtrooper armor with Captain Phasma. So it totally could just be a whole sea... Of hmm. stormtrooper rays, ray troopers. Ooh, there you go. This one has red hair. <laughs> so I don't know. I like. I think that idea is cool. I don't know how that would work for a story arc. Like if she would just fight a whole bunch of herself. I don't know if visually that would be as cool as it may possibly sound. Yeah. I liked the idea when I was thinking about it. And then I've seen since then other people have thought the same thing. So it's mm -hmm. not like it was, I'm the only one that came up with that. But the more I've thought about it, the more I hope that's not the case. Because I think that would really... It'd be pretty on the nose. I mean, if people yeah. could sniff out that idea and yeah. it seems to tick all the boxes, yeah. then uh, I would imagine J.J. Abrams would go, okay, great. Not that. Yeah, well, let's do the opposite of that. 
Yeah, I, I, I really hope it's something that just nobody expects. And so I kind of hope it's not that. You know. Well, and part of me, uh, I've heard people say that all the the Jedi ghosts need to come back and have like a big, you know, we're going to round out the series. We have to go meet everybody again, kind of Jedi ghost fight. Like when uh, Aragorn jumps off of the pirate ship at the end of Return of the King and like the pirate army comes and just like the ghost pirates and, or yeah. the ghost army, not the ghost pirates. The ghost army comes and just defeats everybody in one fail swoop. Because in the last movie, Yoda can apparently hit people so the ghosts can have physical contact with things. Oh, that's right. So they set that in motion. That was the one thing I took away from that scene besides like, oh, you had the cool puppet. Like, that's awesome. But Yoda hit stuff. Like, he made physical contact with things. Huh. I didn't even, I didn't think about that. Yeah. I was like, well, this goes back to, I like these, these 2019 movies or 2018, whenever Endgame came out, like, they're just going to redefine like uh, time travel or all these classic yeah. movie tropes. And it's like, all right, now yeah. we're going to redefine ghosts. So take that Casper and Patrick Swayze. Like, we're going <laughs> to redefine how these things interact in movies now. Well, I mean, it is in a different, you know, it's an entirely different uh, reality, different place, different everything. So it doesn't necessarily redefine anything, but it, it further defines something undefined within the Star Wars universe. Yeah, and because of its popularity for the foreseeable future will become the new kind of standard, just like Back to the Future did uh, those things that kind hmm. of set the stage for time travel movies or ghost movies. Like, well, you have to have, you, you're a ghost until you complete your unfinished business, like on Casper. Like, then you move on. So that became like the pseudo standard in, for a while. I don't think I've ever seen Casper. It's not that good. Hmm. I think that's why I never saw but it. But isn't that what happened in Ghost? With Patrick Swayze? Like, I don't know. He had to save Demi Moore from the bad guy? From the bad guy? With from... Whoopi Goldberg? I have no idea. I mean, I saw it's it. It's been a long time since I've seen that. <laughs> I movie. saw it, but I don't remember. I think there was what a bad happened. guy coming to get her. And he had to ghost stop <laughs> with a penny. Ghost stop. Huh. I think we're kind of due for a new ghost standard. So The Walking Dead redefined uh, zombies. zombies. Yeah, true. So I don't know if I, I haven't seen it. I don't know if the teenager vampire movies, the Twilight, if that redefined vampire stuff. Hmm. Was before Maybe. that. Yeah, I guess so. Bram Stoker's with Dracula or Underworld. That was a very yeah. Um, yeah. The Lost that? Boys. Oh seen yeah. Lost Boys. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's so a good one. maybe oh, it's good. time to redefine ghost interaction. <laughs> maybe maybe it Are is. Are they time. ghosts? Because they are one with the force. Yeah. Ghost would imply that they are in some type of in-between. Right. Before they go to the Undying Lands or Space Heaven. <laughs> space Heaven. Yeah, I don't know. Because, like, if they're actually one with the force, then why would they care about... I don't know. It seems like they would They would be like, okay, well, I'm done with all of you fleshy... Yeah, Jedi people like I'm. I'm now do a good job. Force. Like, have fun. I'm gonna go just be go force ghosty. retire. <laughs> you can't just put force in front of everything. You go play force bridge. That's not how it works. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so with the uh, the movie, the more I thought about the Ray clone thing, I don't think like that doesn't really give Palpatine a a super awesome return thing yeah you know, he doesn't mm -hmm. explain how he got back or how he's redone himself or how whatever the new movies have taken over like oh you fell down a pit we don't need to tell people how you came back lightsaber we'll just keep you here and then we'll go hey how'd the lightsaber get back from falling down a gigantic pit and falling out into the atmosphere ah we'll tell you later <laughs> that's for the comic books yeah but i think they have to at least kind of explain how he came back i think I concur. Because he got thrown down into a thing that then got blown up. It wasn't that he just fell down a hole. He fell down, and then the whole hole Maybe he just got shocked. Up. Or maybe, ooh, maybe he did like a force a push force push against the ground, like an outer rotation in a helicopter. You're like, ah, you're falling, and in a certain like height off the ground, he's like, ah, lightning hands, and oh, then yeah. it cushioned his fall, and he just walked off. And was like, yo, give me your shit. Or, and then... The Death Star blew so up. So when Luke fell down his pit in Empire, he, he just happened to fall into an air conditioning duct on the side and then slid down a nice little slip and slide. Maybe that's where they throw the mattresses away. <laughs> he landed gracefully. 
and got to collect himself. And he's like, okay, it's time to go. Hey, <laughs> trooper, That's give me that spaceship. And they're like, oh, it's Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> we should go get him safe somewhere so he can plot to overthrow the the new crazy pseudo government sometime in the future. Do you think he had anything to do with Snoke? Hmm. Hmm. I really wish there was a Snoke backstory. Yeah. He seemed like an interesting character. Mm hmm. I really like how he interacted. I thought that was a really cool scene. Yeah, I thought that was neat. I don't know. Yeah. Eh, that's not I right. don't think that. I don't know. I don't think Palpatine has had much to do with like orchestrating things so far. I think he's just going to like show back up with force. That wasn't supposed to be a pun, <laughs> but it was kind of a pun. You know, like with an army, with a. That he has I'm been. Back. Training just on. Like that. The crumpled up remains of the Death Star? Mm, I don't think he's been training. I think he's been off somewhere else building up a big thing. It's a big, big universe, you know? Mm -hmm. Lots of room for extra armies to be developed in secret, apparently. He did it before, so... I don't know. I guess we'll find out. But either way, I'm pretty excited about that coming out. Just because it gets us closer to the actual movie. Yeah. Well, and with the new toy sets. So I saw the new Lego sets. It didn't reveal a whole lot. There no. was the one with the Mandalorian. Uh, they do officially call him Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And it does have two of the Knights of Ren in this one set. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray's set is on a Tatooine-style Jabba's barge that Boba Fett fell off of kind of ship. Yeah, but that's in the trailer. Yeah. And that's she's being traced, chased by a tread, tread trooper? That's on like a snowmobile style thing. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a jetpack trooper, which I saw. Yeah. There's a Sith jetpack trooper too. Now that's one thing that's kind of weird is that there are regular first order stormtroopers and there's the Sith, Sith troopers. They yeah, went to additional training. Yeah, I guess so. They got their Sith badge. Mm -hmm. Sith tab. <laughs> it's all about tabs. I don't know. I'm excited about it. I'm just ready for it to come out. But I'm also a little, a little sad that that part of Star Wars will be over. So what do you think is going to happen after that? Because they're not going to be done. They're going to milk know. that they cow. They talked about Kevin Feige doing a Star Wars movie. How do you feel about that? I think that could be cool. I mean, I don't know, honestly, how much creative input and, like, movement he's had within the Marvel stuff. I know he's a producer role, but he's mm -hmm. not... I don't know if he's also kind of, like, actually pulling the strings of the the stories and connective tissue at the same time, or if he's, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know if it, if you just see him as a, as a big person within the Marvel stuff because he's connected to everything or because he's actually had an impact on story and production. And well, according to Sony, he's had, uh, he has had uncredited producer roles in all of the Spider-Man movies that Sony put out. All the Raimi movies. Like yeah. He has been involved in that. So again, it didn't talk about his involvement. But during the, the was Marvel going to try to leave Spider-Man out? Was Sony going to take him back? That whole thing. And Disney kind of pretty much like when they came out with their release and was like, oh, Kevin Feige's busy. That's why we're not doing Spider-Man. And that's really kind of weak statement. And Sony came out and was like, he's been a part of all of this Spider-Man stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like, oh, no, Kevin Feige's not going to be around. Like he's been around the entire time. So you can't try to hold his name hostage. Like, that's why... We don't want to do it because he's done it before. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand. Maybe I don't know enough about, like, the Hollywood uh, positioning within, like, a, f a film crew or a film, you know, whatever team. I always think of a producer as the person who, like, makes sure everything's lined up. Yep. And they make sure that the script people are talking to these people and those people have what they need from the props department and the director has what they need and they're communicating through. And they're just like the... The project manager. Yeah, the project manager, the enabler of yep. the entire thing. And so I don't think of that person as the one who's like, you know, uh, on the Doctor Strange set, they're currently doing this, and so we need to make sure we figure out how to weave. That seems like a very creative department hmm. story guideline person, which maybe that's a producer. But, but it would I have wouldn't to be think like of it a, that way. An MCU-wide producer. Right. 
and maybe that's the thing that he is, you know. Oh, that'd be a pretty cool title. But the thing about that is universal. It's, it's hard to tell exactly how much creative impact he's had and how that would translate to Star Wars. If it's just his name going to Star Wars, I don't know that that's really going to be that big of a deal. But if he is somehow becoming like, or maybe he wants to become the connective tissue person with Star Wars, that would be helpful, I think. Because it seems to me that it, within this last trilogy, they have definitely let J.J. do his thing with very little foresight into what was going to happen next. And then they mm. let Ryan Johnson just do his thing, which I didn't dislike, personally. But but it, it did kind of weaken the tissue. Yeah, it, it was just like, well, okay, I'm going to do my thing without really thinking about what's next. Yeah. And then the next person did the same thing. And then now you have... It feels like they had to bring J.J. back to be able to just kind of like... Wrap it all together. It. So, I don't know. But, we won't know anything for quite a while. I told you we were going to be in Disney when the movie comes out, right? Yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah. I thought we had a thing. Well, you know, it wasn't you, intentional. You That's just when when the thing's happening. To watch the movie with a bunch of strangers? Yeah, you know. Like a loser? Well, you can wait till I get back. No, I can't. <laughs> if we go back and, and we do the roll on the movies that we've went and seen, like opening night, yeah. and you're like, oh, well, I got the tickets for like Thursday or Tuesday afternoon because of all the people. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going Thursday at like the very first showing. And then two days later, you're like, okay, I got tickets for Thursday the very first showing. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> And then you guys were planning your vacation. I'm like, oh, yeah, that sounds fun. You're like, oh, and we're going to be down there for that. Oh. I mean, it's kind of cool. I see. That will... <laughs> no big deal. That's fine. Just don't uh, ditch me for Mickey Mouse. It'll be kind of cool. But at the same time, I'm going to have to find a good theater down there. Uh, and I don't know. Maybe if you're listening and you know of an awesome theater in as close as possible to Disney... Let me know. I remember if there's one in the downtown Disney area? I'm sure there probably I is. I know there's, there's one. Uh, there's one at Universal. Yeah, there's the one at Universal in CityWalk. I think it's an IMAX. It's been a long time since I've been there. Look at this stump. It's a lot taller. That has a hand. Look, it's got a name carved in it. That's cute. Yeah. I guess that's KF. It says, build your dreams, KF, with like a little, somebody wrote it inside the tree. I assume that's Kevin the designer. Kevin <laughs> Oh, whoa. He's in charge of everything. He's everywhere. I bet it's the designer. Kevin Feaser. Mm. Nailed it. All Good right, job. bag number six. Um, uh, so, what else do we have? So, is everything going according to plan with your Disney plans? Uh, yeah, I think set so. In stone? I think it's so. Happening? Yeah, it's all, it's all there. We have to finish paying for it. Uh, which is not terribly fun, but, you know. It's kind of interesting that you can book uh, a stay at the resorts, all the tickets, meal plans, like Disney watch band thingies, whatever they do. It's like your tickets. Those things like come in the mail in a little, like, yeah. ceremonious little box. And you can get them for free, I guess, when you get tickets. They, it's just part of the deal. Mm. But it's kind of interesting that you can book all that, and you pay like two hundred dollars to get it all set in stone, get it reserved, it's and like then you have yeah, and then you have like two months to pay it off. Oh, like on layaway? Yeah, kind of. Put your vacation Which is on layaway. Pretty cool. I mean, mm -hmm. it's smart because it doesn't really cost them anything. To I'm sure that doesn't account for like, I want to go next week. Right. But when you're planning out several months, you know they're not necessarily losing out on having a room booked. Um, I'm sure they probably don't have any trouble with like unbooked rooms. But so that's kind of cool because then you don't have to necessarily drop thousands of dollars all in one chunk. You can spread it out a little bit. And in our case, my parents are going, so they're going to pay for their part of it and stuff. So, Were your parents layaway people? I uh, don't think so. I don't ever remember doing layaway stuff. My mom was. I remember going to Kmart. And, you know, like, we would have to go, like, over there while she went back to the back to go talk to layaway people and, like, pay on the thing that mm. we were going to get for Christmas. Oh, yeah. So we right. weren't allowed to go back there with her. So right. it would spoil the, the fun. <laughs> and now layaway is not a thing. I, actually, I don't think it's a thing. I think it is, actually. Hmm. I think in certain certain stores they still do it. Like Walmart seems like they're doing it. And it's just not something I would think to do as a means to getting something. It seems like you would just wait 
and pay for it when you get it. But I guess there's some scarcity to some things where they, you know, you want to get them, get a hold of them now. Yep. But I you get a hold of it now, and then you pay little tiny bits of it. Did it's you actually like, get to take it with you, though? No, you had to you go. You had to wait until it was yeah. paid off, right? Yeah, I guess they just, I don't know. I was never allowed to go back and look no, at whatever sure. it was. But I guess they just kind of keep it back at the customer service thing, whatever the thing happens to be. And then you just go pay a little bit by a little bit until you've paid it off, and then you get to take it home. Hmm. So it's not like a credit card where you get to have it now and pay later. Yeah. They hold it now, and you pay a little bit. It seems like a much smarter idea than a credit card, if I'm honest. Theoretically. Yeah. If you don't have money, you don't get the thing. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of cool to be able to reserve it, but um, I had a thing that I was going to say a second ago. We were talking about Lego. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I've told you before about the Twitter account, the the Lego Space Bot account. No. So there's this Twitter account called Lego Space Bot. I'm pretty sure, and basically it's a robot that just posts pictures of vintage lego star wars no sorry lego space kits hmm. and so it's like the covers of the instructions so you see the kit sometimes this is the boxes it's just kind of cool because like every day i get some picture of like a toy that i saw when i was a kid like ones i had or ones that right. i always wanted and didn't have and so it's kind of cool just to see them um and then i got to thinking the other day like some somebody was talking about the sears catalogs and so i went we and talked found about some sears catalog last week maybe that's what it was mm -hmm. so i went and looked up some images of the toy setups yeah, of, you know, from those catalogs. And I was like, oh, man, there's got to be another Twitter account that has the same kind of thing, but for toys from all those wish books. Because yeah. there was the JC one, JC Penny one, mm -hmm. the Sears one. They were all the basically Toys R Us had one. Yeah, Toys R Us. So there's got to be like a wish book Twitter bot. I could not find one. Mm. So anybody out there with Twitter bot skills needs to make that and send it to me. Well, there is a website. I don't want it bad has... enough to do it myself. Uh, that has a collection of the the retailer's guides. So, so like what we were talking about earlier, where if you wanted to buy a toy, like this is what Kenner or Mattel or whoever's putting out for like 1989. Hmm. Um, there is a website that has compiled tons of those because as I was looking for Centurion toys, somebody led me on to it. And because they only made those toys, I think in 1986. And so it was the 1987 buyer's oh. guide that had all the new stuff that they never actually came out with. So that's how people know that these super rare toys yeah. exist because you can see them and apparently there are very very few actual sets that they they gave away to people in in japan from what i've read just to like get feedback like beta testing toy kits but they never went to market hmm. and so there's just really rare characters in this you know very short-lived cartoon tv show that have action figures but nobody has them Somebody has them. Yeah, somebody has one. Have you ever seen any of them? Like listings for any of the? I've seen. Uh, so there's the three characters. The, there's the the yellow, the red, or yellow and green and blue guy. Then there is a Native American guy, and then this other white guy with a beard. And I've seen the head of the white guy with the beard. I've never actually seen his toy for sale or anybody that actually has it. Because hmm. there's a lot of forums and things where people take pictures of their stuff, and then mostly it's eBay to go hunt that stuff down. Yeah. But he was the, like, everybody has their specialty. The blue is the air, the yellow is the land, the green is the water. Well, this guy especially was nuclear, <laughs> and his suit glowed <laughs> in the dark. My specialty is green. Yeah. <laughs> is getting radiation poisoning. <laughs> so. Huh. I, I mention that because I know that there's websites that have those kind of guides, and so maybe there is like a buyer's guide bot or something. Oh, yeah, could be. Yeah, I may have just not been looking for the right term because I was thinking, I, I started with like Sears catalog and then found the term wish book as mm -hmm. like a, a general term for those things. So then I started looking up wish book and I found posts with that hashtag. So I found more pictures, but having a bot that would just send them out yeah. every day. Would be our old buddy cool. Brent found an old wish book and posted it on our Discord the other day. Hmm. I don't think I saw that. Um, that would be cool, though. I would like to see that. Just because those images of the toys set up are so, like, they were inspirational to me as a kid for, like, oh, that's another way I could play with the stuff I already have. Like, hmm. they'd have these fake little outside you know it looked like they went and cut out a, a square of somebody's backyard and like put it in the studio yeah. and then you know had like rocks and like tiny trees I'm like man there's i've got to have something like that around here and i didn't 
It was just grass. The precursor to the the action, was it like action staging? Yeah, action yeah. figures. Yeah, they're pretty cool though. I'd like to see some of those images again. See, I always get jealous of like the the kids and stuff in those those advertisements. And I always wondered if they were like. I don't know, 1980s version of Photoshop, or did they just find these kids? And how do you get that job of like, oh, here's a toy that has never been released and is super awesome. Play with it, and we're going to take pictures. Oh, yeah, that kid gets to see it first. Yeah, if, like, that kid is still around, like, oh, yeah, I played with the whatever version of the Hot Wheels toys before anybody else got to play with it. I was the kid that was making the crazy excited face behind (laughs) Chewbacca. (laughs) What? (laughs) There's a a commercial, a Transformers commercial, um... Where it would do the robots in disguise thing. Mm-hmm. And this one kid, this little blonde kid, would face right at the camera, straight in the center, and have this real super mean look on his face and go, robots in disguise, but it would do the robot voice. Ooh. And I saw a video with that kid later on as an adult, and it was just like, he was just like some dude. Mm-hmm. But it was so funny because I associated that, like, as a kid of that same age, like, oh, it's so cool, he has a robot voice, and then they would kind of draw a Transformer mask on top of him, on some of them, and stuff. It's pretty funny, but super nerdy at the same time. Um, the toy thing, like with the, the prototype, I'm always surprised at how many Star Wars prototypes, but I've also seen Transformer and G.I. Joe prototypes, too. It's amazing that that stuff exists at all to me because mm. if you think about like the you can find on on ebay you can find prototype pieces and weapons and figures of all these different stages of like any character and it's amazing that somebody's selling them but that they exist at all um but if you think about like when those were created it was somebody's job to be a toy designer and they were yeah. in a studio with a bunch of other people adults and they were just like well we got to make a thing look like this picture we got like i don't know what this furry ninja rabbit is so i'm just gonna sculpt the thing and like send it off and somehow that little piece in the process that of that iterative design process that piece survived yeah seems wild to me and it's not like they were like production things it's not like they were the last stages of here's the last pressing before we go to you know 100 percent production it's just like i don't know what darth vader's supposed to look like <laughs> let's let's uh sculpt up a thingy and his leg is red and his torso is purple in fact they put out uh, an action figure that was a darth vader prototype figure and it was in target i think it was this last year and it was on the original card and the figure of darth vader from the original movies was like all different colors and everyone Mm. was some random variation of like his arm was green his head was blue his torso was purple or whatever and they were all different and it was some sort of a I don't know why they did that, but it was some sort of a callback to the prototype ones that you can, I guess, still find. So that was kind of a weird move for them because it didn't seem like that would sell real well. But anyway, my son is, why are you down here? Why are you down here? You got stung in the foot. By what? Huh. And peanut M&Ms need to help? Okay, I think that's take, the, take them upstairs. Ask your mother medicine. if you can have them. It's fine with me. Well, you need to go find her. Tell her you got stung by a dragon in the foot. Those peanut M&Ms are mine. It wasn't a dragon? Anyway, so Could kids are home dragon. for uh, fall break. We have fall break here, which is kind of weird. It's like spring break, but in the fall. So the kids are here this week. I like the idea of fall break. That didn't exist where we were because kind of fall didn't exist where we were. <laughs> Late summer break. Yeah. It's a cool idea. But at the same time, it seems really close to the beginning of school. I mean, it's two months in, I guess, but I don't know. I'm not used to it because we didn't have it when I was a kid either. Oh, so this is a relatively new thing. Yeah, they started this it. This is nothing that you had uh, growing up? No, no, we definitely didn't. <clears throat> um, and there was some, one of the schools here went to a year-round school. This is like 15, 20 years ago or something. And part of the year-round school was that you had these longer breaks. You had more of them a year, but then you had a little bit of school in the summer. Mm -hmm. And fall break was a remnant of that, even though they went back to a normal school schedule or something. I don't know. My dad was telling me about it, but a long time ago. Anyway, I don't have any... Of all the toy collecting I've ever done, I don't have any prototype toys. 
that would be super cool. Just well, to have watching, like one little, you know, one piece of watching the toys that made us mm-hmm. on Netflix. Like you see their, I'm going to use air quotes, prototype, where they just take like a, a Star Wars action figure and just put modeling clay all over it to make him look super muscular. And like, boom, that's He Man. Yep. And so the, it was very fun to to look at that glimpse behind the curtain of them making some of the most iconic toys that they happened to convince you were awesome, <laughs> because they just make up these absurd stories. Yeah. They make like, oh, we need a comic book. This thing is the prince of Zaholtord, and he fights, uh, what's that thing? <laughs> it kind of looks like a lizard. Yeah, he fights li- lizard Lizardo. Face. Lizard face over there. Yeah. Is he ride on a motorcycle? No, he, uh, uh, I don't know, we ran out of money. Well, this thing has a giant tiger. He, for, he rides on a giant tiger. <laughs> <laughs> and it just seems like yeah. they're just pulling stuff out of their butt to make it up. And... It, well, that's literally what they were doing. Oh, yeah. And He-Man, uh, I'll use He-Man for instance, like had so many bad guys and like ancillary characters. Yeah. That they could just literally make up whatever. Anything. I mean, there was one that was a skunk. Yeah. This guy has a... There was a, a guy that was a leech. There was. <laughs> this dude looks so like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Like, we'll give him a bunch of muscles and don't call him that. Call him Lagoony. Boom. Yeah. It's funny because like I was super into Transformers. And after the original kind of run of Transformers, there were a bunch of really cool comic books and all this stuff. And this whole big, uh, like, history was written around Transformers and how there were this, you know, like thousands of years of battling between these two factions and they came from this thing and they believed this stuff and there's this whole backstory. And then it started to change as time went on and people got all upset about, well, that's not the original transformer story and that's not the original like you know they're not meant to be this way and do this thing and and it turns out that like transformers were made out of like well we need some good guys and that company makes car transforming robots so let's get them and we need some bad guys and that company makes a different kind of transforming robot so let's do that and it's just like jam together some japanese toys that have (laughs) nothing to do with each other it's like if we went on a resell them in the u.s as one thing and they're like, what y'all got over there? <laughs> this toy was a car and turns into a robot. Oh, dope. Give me that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> hey, guys, I, I'm just going to spitball an idea real quick. What about a car that turned into a robot? That'll never get made. Well, here's one I made up. Yeah, I, I, uh, I made this, this on the plane on the way back from Japan. It's kind of crazy. But that show is pretty awesome. And I saw it was coming back for uh, third season. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, they had the, the properties listed that they were going to cover. I don't remember what. I think... Maybe Ninja Turtles was one of them. Oh, Ninja Turtles. Maybe. Uh, but the other ones were kind of forgettable to me. Mm. There I has wish they always do- been an iteration of Ninja Turtles toys on the shelf. Huh. It has they're, never they're, gone away. Really? Yeah. I, th- I thought there would have been a gap. But. I'm pretty positive. I can think back to when I was a kid and Ninja Turtles came out. You know, when I got the original Raphael and, and Leonardo with the little brown, like, snap-out uh, weapons. Hmm. Like, there were those, and then it just, like we're talking about, just went bonkers. Yeah. Because they made a cartoon, and with that cartoon and the infinite little, like, Dimension X and all the other stuff, like, you could literally have whatever you wanted. And there was no rules to any of those characters. And then it would get bought out by this other thing, or it would get morphed into, like, this new animation style, or a new movie right. would come out, yep. or the CW pick it up. And it's just, there's always been CW. a Ninja Turtles thing. <laughs> it's just always around. Yeah. And I'm sure whenever it starts to go stale, if they haven't done it already, I haven't been paying that much attention, they'll reboot the, the OG oh, Ninja yeah. Turtles toys again. It's been rebooted. Uh, or like bring the, them out as like collector's edition. Yeah, No, they already have. Yeah, I yeah, imagine. They have. But yeah. even within the, the time that my kids have been watching Ninja Turtles, there's already been two separate iterations of like style of show and accompanying toys. And then they brought back all the old stuff, you know, for anniversary or whatever. Did you see the newer Ninja Turtles movies? No, I have Neither not. Neither did I. I have not seen any Ninja Turtles movies since the very first one. And even that I barely remember because it was... I remember. loved that movie. Had Ninja Turtle folders. Ninja Turtles were... I think I was a little bit too old yeah, when that like hit. That. And it just didn't really... I didn't dislike it. It just didn't catch me. You yeah. know? So I never had any of the toys. Uh, I played the video games a little bit. Oh, on that Nintendo, video game. That was about it. That game. That game. The unbeatable game. Really? Did you beat it? Oh, oh no. I never okay. beat any game. But, that game is unbeatable. But I didn't play it. Like, I didn't have my own system, so I didn't play a lot of that stuff. 
like everybody else yeah. did. There's a bug in it. And really? if someone reaches out to me and go, oh, yeah, I beat that game. I bet you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> that game is so hard. Huh. I, I mean, I did play, like, uh, E.T. on the Atari a lot. Well, I mean, that is, <laughs> I guess, purposely, like, uh, comically unbeatable. Yeah. But this was like, throw your controller across the room. Hmm. I'm sure it didn't reach the, the level that E.T. did because somebody out there has probably beat it. Uh, but it hadn't been me. I what? think the half of the reason that I started that Raspberry Pi project was to land the airplane on the aircraft carrier in Top Gun, which I did. <laughs> nice. And to beat Ninja Turtles, which I have never. <laughs> I've seemed to digress and got worse at that game than I did when I was a kid. Huh. Which I think is is the the uh, fog and the misguided confidence you get building a Raspberry or a Retro Pi. That you're like, I'm finally, because now I'm a smart. I'm an adult. Yeah. I know how to pay taxes and stuff, and I can drive. Hooray for me. And then you get in and you try to play Kirby, you try to play Mega Man, and, and you're you like, no wonder smoted. I couldn't play it. <laughs> this game has gotten harder. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm pretty terrible at all of them. Uh, 4B was here, you know, last week when we recorded with the whole team. And we played some Dr. Mario, like we talked about. We uh, went up and played some Dr. Mario and with the Switch controllers. Totally different experience. Not really? Yeah. Mm. Just like we both immediately were like, nope, this isn't right. Because mm. it's, it's like kind of clicky. There's like a little tiny just microsecond delay. But when you play something so much on a single controller single system, and you just know it that way, if you move it to a different system and the, the processing time is a little bit different or the buttons react a little bit different, like, you can feel it, and it is so frustrating. We played a couple of times in the week that he was here, man, and it was just... And we even got, like... I have some uh, NES-style Switch controllers mm-hmm. thinking, well, that'll probably fix it. And I think I got those last time he was here because we tried to play. And so we finally got these all hooked up and they were a little bit better, but there's still something just not right about it. Now, have you explained your your love of Dr. Mario? Specifically you and Forby? I don't know. Um, maybe. But basically, we used to play Dr. Mario, and this is, I'm talking used to, like in the, like 10 years ago. We used to play it on the Wii all the time. On the NES and then on the Wii. And it actually was pretty correct. The timing was pretty correct on the Wii. So we got really used to that. We would play it. I had some, several other friends that were really good at it. Jenny's really good at it. And so it was this one game where everybody, not everybody, but there was a group of us that were all on the same level. You put me like in any other video game with any other person and I'm going to lose. Hmm. Dr. Mario, I might have a pretty good chance of winning. And so we played it a whole lot. And then when they started make, when you could start making your own iOS games, we were like, hey, we should try to make Dr. Mario for iOS. And so Forby and I started a game company called Robot vs. Monkey, and we made this game called Flu Fighter, which Jenny uh, titled. And so we built essentially Dr. Mario, one player, touchscreen on the iPhone. And it took forever, and it was difficult, and I had to go really deep into how the game worked and how things reacted and how you calculate completing things. And building algorithms for that, which is something I had never really done until that point. And so we built it, and it was terrible. And I put it out there because I was sick of working on it for like a year and a half or something. Put it out there, and the reviews were terrible. <laughs> and so it was <laughs> real bad. So after a while of it being out there, I'm like, okay, I think I've finally been away long enough. I can start again. There were new like, graphics engines and new game technologies that would make it easier to write. So we rewrote it from the ground up. And it was way better. It was a pretty good game. We had the initial game that was kind of a one-for-one with Dr. Mario. And then we had these plans of... And we did a little bit of this add-on stuff where we wanted to add, like, bombs. Mm. And, you know, extra pieces that did different things that you could... It would enhance the gameplay and kind of change it. We did a little bit of that. We had holiday theme things where... It would randomly, not randomly, but somebody was playing and they play it, you know, for a couple days before Christmas and then all of the viruses have Santa hats on and we did stuff like that. And so we did it for a while and then, you know, life. And so we stopped updating it and then let it die and then eventually took it down just because we weren't supporting it anymore. Yeah. 
Uh, but it did pretty well. But well it still for a while. exists somewhere. I don't think in you can a, buy it anymore. In a zip folder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if somebody bought it, I assume they s- can still download it. But it's not available in the store. I'm not really sure about that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was it was pretty cool. But so we have a lot of experience with playing and playing Dr. Mario and understanding how it works and how to do things to force it to be what you want. We were pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty good. That's, and then I've been out of cool. practice for several years, so not as good as I was. <laughs> but if someone tried to go find Flu Fighter, you're saying they couldn't find it on the App Store? No, probably not. No, it's been taken down. Challenge. I mean, go for it, but don't be mad if it doesn't work. Because, you know, technology's changed a lot since that was last updated, so it likely would not run correctly on the modern phone. But, yeah, that's us and Dr. Mario. And I have not played the new one. That's the official one that's out now. Because we kind of got away with that because uh, Nintendo didn't do any any games for non-Nintendo systems. And so they oh. didn't really see making a clone of one of their games, which ha- we didn't use Mario iconography. We didn't use names, music, anything. Just like that uh, like, like Jumpy Bird game? Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't use anything related to it, and we got away with it. But now they have iOS games. They have Dr. Mario on iOS, so I've heard. And so I'm sure if you tried to come out with your own version of it now, they would smite you. They'd snatch it up. Smash you with a lawyer. But luckily we're not doing it anymore. So. Yeah, uh, we've talked about nonsense for 52 minutes. <laughs> Toys and junk. Uh, I I really don't want to get back into toy collecting, but then every time they, like Star Wars toys come out, I'm like, man, it's like I kind of want that action figure. And I know as soon as I pick it up, I'm gonna take it home, and it's either gonna sit in the box in the closet, or it's gonna sit out of the box on a shelf. And it's gonna be a thing I have to dust. If we have shelf space, yeah, we yeah, we probably need to build some shelves. I still here. peruse eBay for the like the few pieces to the original Centurion set that I need. Oh, I thought you had them all now. No. I have all, I have, I'm not, they're not 100%. Oh. So I thought I, that last batch, that auction you had won, you got. No, those. I won an auction for like a whole new weapon system, but for like the, the baseline, all three of the original guys, they have their kind of base kits. Uh, I am missing one piece Ooh. for one guy to have an entire original base kit. And I have not been able to find that piece on eBay. It's a two part. So like it's a, it's a little like radar thing that sits in a hinged housing. I found the hinged housing, but I have not found the actual radar thing. And the hinged housing is like 15 bucks Whoa! for really? like a thumbnail size piece of plastic. Gosh. Yeah. Isn't it weird that like you, you still want that original one little piece, even though you know full well you could model and print that thing yep. in any color you want. People have asked me about that. Like, Why don't you just print it? I'm like, well, it's I mean, not, yeah. It's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. I wanted to have a little bit of chewed marks from some kid's little sister. Or, <laughs> Gross. Like, that's how you know it's good. Mm. You know a quick pro or con? Yeah, sure. You got some? Anthony, hit me. Mm. Whoa, whoa. Zipping around. Zipping around. Waking up early, staying up late. Mm. I used to be a stay up late person. Actually, when I was writing Flu Fighter, it was a lot of like starting at midnight, ending at 4 a.m., coding sessions it was pretty terrible i used to do really well with being productive in that time because it was quiet because i was by Mm -hmm. myself i didn't have to worry about like neglecting anything else because nothing else should be happening at that time now because i have to get up at like 6 a.m to get the kids ready for school and stuff and run and all that staying up late is just something i have no interest in yeah since i've been going to crossfit oh you do crossfit oh yeah i'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I run. It's okay. Yeah. The class that I go to is at five. Yeah, and so I get up at four thirty, give or take, most of the days of the week. And I found it's easier to get up early uh, yeah. if I have that one thing I need to do, and it's early enough to where I have free time afterward before I'm like I have to engage with the kids or if I need to be somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of nice. It it really is. It's yeah. nice to have that little. Because before, like, Tiff and I would stay up really late, just the two of us hanging out, and then just be super groggy in the morning. Yeah. So that, I mean, she has stuff she has to do in the morning. I have stuff I have to do in the morning. So making that transition was easier than I 
remember it whenever I'd had to get up to go to work. And I like dreaded getting up in the morning. But I don't know, it's kind of transitioned to morning time. Yeah. It's funny because this week the kids are home, so I don't have to get up as early. So I've been setting the alarm for 7 instead of 6, and then I end up getting out of bed at like 7.30 because I don't really have to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. The last two days, I've not run in the morning mm-hmm. like I should have, and it's just because I don't have that thing that's forcing me to be up early because once I'm up, then it's fine. They go to school, and I'm like, well, yeah, Gotta I, can, do something. I can go run. I can get ready for work and all that you know, before work time, but if I don't have that thing that forces me up, slack and yeah. I don't like that and I find myself now like when I just kind of wake up I tend to wake up before my alarm at 4 30 which is not it's usually like 3 45 or That's maybe crazy. 4 and I'm like I kind of have to pee and I'm kind of up I'm like ugh, I don't want to be up this early I would totally go back to bed I mean I get to go to the bathroom every night at least once and on the way back from the bathroom I'm like I get to go <laughs> this is going to be awesome. And then I just lay back down. All right, we got another one. Love bugs? Uh. <laughs> That's a pro or con. <laughs> uh. Who is pro love bug? <laughs> Seriously. I don't know if people everywhere know what love bugs are. Oh, yeah, they might not. Are they up here? No, I haven't seen one. I guess they are kind of a southern thing. Do you know the story behind them? I have heard that there was some like genetically engineered creature from some university that went awry. That's what I've heard, too. It's from the University of Florida. I heard it was FSU, so it's, oh, this is how we okay. know it's crap yeah. because yep. they're battling back and forth. There you go. Uh, well, the story that I heard was that it was a bug that somebody tried to modify to cut down on the mosquito population, and then it turned out that it didn't do that, but all they do is, like... Ruin your paint job. <laughs> all they do is be disgusting for, like, two weeks out of the year everywhere yeah. in the South. So love bugs are just, they call them love bugs because there's like two bugs joined at the butt and they fly around in tandem and you drive through them if you go anywhere, especially on the interstate and the front of your car is just black. Yeah. And if you leave them on too long, it can like chip the paint. So you have to go to car washes and like scrub off the love bugs. It's just ugh, pretty gross. terrible. So con, yeah. Whoever, the only person that would be pro is the person that made them. Who's laughing maniacally. It's like the biggest, worst practical joke ever. I'm going to make a whole species that does nothing. Except ruin your paint job on your car. <laughs> All right. One more? Yeah. One more. Uh, <laughs> there's two that say toilet paper. <laughs> oh, it's the same guy. Eugene. Over, under. Does anybody like it? Like rolling off the back? Do people use? You- I don't know. That's Why would you do that? You got a lot of comments saying that the cats, <laughs> oh it'll be gosh. fine because the cats would paw at it and it wouldn't unroll itself. Sure. But yeah. the cats don't paw at it. They just destroy it. They shred it with their knife hands. Yeah, that's not the same thing. I don't know why anybody would roll it over on the backside on purpose. Mm-hmm. But, it's, I mean, I guess it works. It's just harder to rip off. Yeah, it seems like an extra step and more stuff to touch in a bathroom. Yeah. Ooh. There's a lot of movies in that, Brent. Brent gave us a huge list of movies. Are these oh for pro and con? All right, we'll do rapid fire. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow. Tommy Boy. Pro. pro. You got to say them at the same time. Horrible okay. Bosses. Never seen Never it. Never seen it. The Shining. Don't Never really seen remember it. it. Cars. Nah. Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Turner and Hooch. Eh, eh, not bad. Shawshank. Pro. Pro. Coneheads. No, I'm getting Wait in. A Castaway. Eh, pro. pro. Too long, but yeah. not bad. Yeah. You know. Signs. Eh, pro. Pro. It was good. Beverly Hills Cop, don't remember yeah, it. Yeah, don't remember. Uh, Coneheads, don't remember yeah. it. White Chicks? Con. <laughs> con. I've never seen it, but I'm just going to go with Con. Sandlot? Pro. Pro. Stand By Me? Pro. Pro. Green Mile? Pro. Pro. Uh, Tombstone? Pro. Pro. What I vaguely remember of it. Poltergeist? Never seen it. Never seen it either. E.T. Pro. Eh. Really? Eh. You should go back and watch it as an, like... I know, we've had this conversation. Yeah. Eh. Did, have you watched it recently? No. You should give it a shot. Because I'm eh, on ET. Because <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> like it. All right, Moana. Pro. Pro. It's pretty good. Really like Was Moana. that the last one? Boom. Wow. Roasted. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, uh, thanks, Brent. Yeah, that was good. Um, where can people find you? Uh, Josh underscore make stuff. 
Everywhere. Where? Everywhere. Everywhere. You can find all of us at I Like to Make Stuff on all the stuff. And if you want to help out this show, you can join the Maker Alliance, which is what we call the people that are the members on YouTube and on Patreon that help out I Like to Make Stuff. They get uh, a bunch all of cool stuff. access stuff behind the scene, extra videos. In fact, right after this, we're going to go do a hangout with a lot of the Maker Alliance. Uh, that's today. Yep. And the monthly it. hangout. So Month- if you want to talk to Bob and I, kind of in the background, um, <laughs> live and in person, we talk about what you're doing. Yeah. It's not a, this is what we're doing. It's you tell us what's going on, and then we hang out and talk like people talk. Yeah. It's usually a pretty small group. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they Yeah, it's really a surprisingly small group. Yeah. There's a lot of people at that tier. They just, I don't know, a lot of people don't show up or... They, that's I don't know whatever. This is how There's I room, first is my point. Met you, so <laughs> not saying that it's a foot in the door for future employment. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> but I mean, it has played out in the past. Yeah, yeah. Sample size of one. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Bye bye. I'm almost done with this bag. I'm not. So close. I'm not. Oh, that's like a birdhouse. Look at that. Oh, that's kind of cool.